determine God's will for Jesus. And circumstances should not determine God's will for you. Circumstances bring out what's inside of us. It says a man is tested by his praise, and I believe people are also tested by their adversity. Those are tests, just because to see what's in. If all of a sudden we get a lot of praise, I get nervous. That's what, I've come to that place. I get, I'm starting to get nervous because just as the one day they were tell, saying, Jesus, laying down their cloaks, Hosanna to the Son of David. One week later, crucify him! One week! Don't let people determine who you are. Don't let circumstances determine. Hey, these are worth pondering. These things are worth pondering. Who you think you are in your own eyes is worth pondering. Who you think you are, not who you are. Who you think you are is worth pondering. I like this in Romans. For the back, by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. But rather think of yourself with sober judgment. <laughs> what does that mean? How do you, how more highly than you ought? How, so how high ought to I think of myself, you know? There's a warning here that our tendency is to think of ourselves more highly. Jesus did not die for a bunch of great people. <laughs> he didn't die for a bunch of in control great people. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Think back before you knew Jesus. How great were you? <laughs> That's that's what it's that's what I mean. Oh, yeah, well, that kind of puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Okay. Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should be fools so that you may become wise. In other words, don't be wise. Don't be worldly wise. Wise in the world's eyes. He says you should become fools in the world's eyes. Then you'll become wise in my eyes. It, it's a flipped up thing. You know, it's... If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. And then, how do you like that in Luke? The disciples. Here's the, here's the people Jesus called. His disciples. A dispute also arose among the twelve as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. But we do this. We all have a pecking order. Well, at least I'm not as bad as so and so. Yeah, I talk with him, and you know what? I've done this before. I go to, I come to Benny, and I say, you know what? I feel a little bit better because I talk with all these these different people today. And you know what? We don't have it that bad. <laughs> you know, and there's something that that's no. What's God? You know, I, 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 my, my measuring stick is not folk. <laughs> he can't, no! There's something perverted with that, right? Things worth pondering. <clears throat> Things worth mulling over. Take, take these, I'm throwing out a lot of different scriptures. Take these and chew on these babies. Don't just dip that tea bag in and say, I ain't getting out of that thing. You know, warm the water up. So, you know, have a have a half an hour of worship before you get into it. You, know, you gotta warm up a bit into this thing, you know? Have a you know get you know you get into a cold well, I don't know, I don't yeah, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand the I've heard I don't understand the Bible. The Bible's 
newborn babe, newborn babes desire the milk of the word. That's a healthy baby. You know the baby's healthy if it wants fed. You know you're a healthy Christian if you desire God's word. You're unhealthy if you say, eh, you pick it. Pick at the food. Pick at God's word. Yeah, you it, uh, you know, I've, I've heard it all before. Oh my goodness. It talks about the riches of his knowledge. There's rich stuff in here. If you let it steep. If you let it steep. Because it says that the word of God is sharp. Come to the very depths of us, to the div division of the soul and the spirit, and to the very thoughts and the intentions of the heart. If we let it steep, God will get down into the deep place in us. Worth pondering the attributes and character of God, who God is. This is worth pondering. Romans. Think about how kind. You reflect on that. Reflect on your life. How kind God has been to you. If so and so had. So, you know, how kind has God been to you? Also, think about how firm he is. <clears throat> Some translation is stern. God is grace and truth. That's what that is. He's hard on those who stop following him, but he's. But he is kind to you. Who here have always followed him? Who here have always followed him last week? Just think how great Jesus was. That's what the passage of Hebrews. Think, just think how great he is. These are let it steep. But he said, well, okay, yeah, he's great. You know, go on, next passage. Let it steep. Get into, you know, how great is God? Do a little study on the Bible. How great is our God? He created the heavens. He created the earth. <coughs> he's determined the time set for us in the exact places that we should live in order that we would seek him. How great is our God? We have you know, a song like that. By faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful. She considered God faithful. You know, that to me is one of the... There was, there was a shift in my soul when I started, when I meditated. You know, God is a faithful God. You know, those who are faithful, I can place my faith in. <coughs> Isn't that right? Those who are faithful, we can place our faith in. If they're not faithful, we can't place our faith in. With those who are trustworthy, we can trust. And, and part of the reason we are not, we don't trust because we don't, Believe God's trustworthy. He's, he's not faithful. He, that somehow we don't believe that He's going to. To me, one of the other aspects that I would add to faithful is good. What if, you actually, what if we actually believe on the deepest level that God is an absolutely good God? That means he'll take care of you. He's good. He's a good God. Yeah, he's God, but you know, I don't know. And, and see, if we don't really believe he's good, then we're going to try to figure out another way for our life to make our life good. Because we don't trust him to be a good father. 
Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Consider him. Consider his life. Meditate on Jesus. He endured opposition. He was able, and you know what? Where's, where's Jesus right now? Where is he? What now? Okay, that's one right answer. Keep going. In your heart. There's another right answer. Just think. He's in your heart. And you know what? He was able to what? Endure opposition. You're able to endure because he lives in you and he lives in me. Christian brothers, you have, you have been chosen and set apart by God. So let us think about Jesus. All these different passages. Let's think about Jesus. You know, let it steep now. Remember, we've got to get the hot water. Spend half an hour or so, 45 minutes of worship. Get yourself lathered up spiritually. <laughs> and, then, and then open open his word. Get into it. You know, if you get into a cold, that tea bag, ah, I get it. You got this thing. You know, let it, let it steep. Have you ever had it that it's so hot you put the tea bag in and it starts to boil? That's hot water. That's hot water for you. Yeah, you just touch that tea bag and it starts to shh. Man, it's sucking it out of it. That water's hungry. What now? <laughs> Worth pondering. I think this is the last one. Our purpose and our mission on the earth. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward one of good deeds. Let us meditate. Lord, how can I encourage? How can I encourage Just say, well, I think I'll say this to him. I hope it encourages him. And then if it doesn't, well, then. then. Get, get in some deep prayer about how we spur one another on towards love, towards the life of love and the life of good works, good deeds. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. Peter <coughs> says, I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you. Wholesome thinking. How can we stimulate our, stimulate each other, stimulate our thoughts? You know. You know he's he wrote a whole letter to help people in their thought life. You know, how can we help raise the thoughts of each other? To a great, to God's great vision. And here's Paul, I consider my life worth nothing to me. And he's mulled this over. You know what? My life isn't worth, it's not worth much to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task <coughs> that Lord Jesus has given me. Mull over, why does God have you on this earth? If it's not about completing the task, then your life is worth something to you. I can guarantee it. Your life's about you. I mean, that's the contrast there, isn't it? I consider my life worth what? Nothing. Nothing. Wow. That's the selfless life. That 
means his whole life is a bunch of seeds. His whole life is about planting Christ in other people. See, each of us are like fruit trees. Either we eat our own fruit or we give it all away and multiply it. And I like the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. It's all about grace. I didn't earn anything. God got a hold of the selfish life. Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised. I am calm and quiet in my soul. Now, I would just ask us this week to calm and quiet your soul. Some of us are more introverted and that's not as difficult. Some of us are extroverted and we hate to be alone. We like noise on all the time. We have to have the radio, the, the music, something in the background. Quiet yourself. My soul is like a mother child. My mind, soul is mind, will, and emotions. Calm your mind. Your emotions. How many know sometimes that your your mind gets in the way of prayer? wondering mind, or about the emotions that are just all over the place. <coughs> or you just have desires that in your will is sort of out of control. Mary treasure of all these things in the Lord, help us. Mary gave us a good example. Lord. She treasured the events that took place <coughs> about Jesus, about how you entered her life, about what her role was, about she took all these things in and then she mulled them over and prayed about it. Lord, help us. Help us not just dip the tea bag in our life. But we would just chew on your word. And as we chew on your word, that's when your life will come real to us. Thank you for being the Lord. here today, and Lord, I just ask that you draw them to you. Lord, I just want to thank you for each one that's here. Forgive us that we, at times, our purpose is that we come to you for ourselves. Help us to see your great vision that you have for our life, that you have on this earth. Thank you, Father.